Eruvin 54a. She kicked him and said to him, Isn't it written as follows? Ordered in all things and secure. 2 Samuel 23.5 Which indicates that if the Torah is ordered in your 248 limbs, i.e. if you exert your entire body in studying it, it will be secure, and if not, it will not be secure. The Gemara relates that it was similarly taught in a Bereta. Rabbi Eliezer had a student who would study quietly, and after three years he forgot his studies. Incidental to the story cited above involving a student of Rabbi Eliezer, the Gemara cites the following episode. It was taught in a Bereta. Rabbi Eliezer had a student who was liable for the punishment of death by burning, for his sins against God. But the rabbi said, Let him alone, and do not punish him as he deserves, because he served a great person. The Gemara cites instructions issued by Shmuel that are similar to those of Beruya. Shmuel said to Rav Yehuda, Keen scholar, Shinana, open your mouth and read from the Torah. Open your mouth and study the Talmud, in order that your studies should endure in you and that you should live a long life as it is stated. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Proverbs 4.22 do not read to those who find them, lematsaihem, but rather to those who express them, lematsaihem, with their mouth. The Gemara cites additional instructions issued by Shmuel. Shmuel said to Rav Yehuda, his beloved student, Keen scholar, grab and eat, grab and drink, as the world from which we are departing is like a wedding feast, whose joy is only temporary, and one who does not take pleasure in it now will not be able to do so in the future. Similarly, Rav said to Rav Hamnuna, My son, if you have money, do well for yourself. There is no point waiting, as there is no pleasure in the netherworld, and death does not tarry. And if you say, I will save up in order to leave for my children, who told you the law of the netherworld, i.e., how do you know which of you will die first? A rook. People are similar to grass of the field, in that these blossom i.e. grow, and their actions are blessed, and these wither and die. Having expounded the verse, for they are life to those who find them, as referring to the Torah, the Gemara cites another teaching related to this verse that praises the Torah. Rabbi Yahashua ben Levi said, One who is walking along the way, without a companion, and is afraid should engage in Torah study, as it is stated with regard to the words of Torah. For they shall be a graceful wreath, livyat hen, for your head, and chains about your neck. Proverbs one nine. The word livyat is understood here as a reference to leviya, accompaniment so that the verse is interpreted to mean that Torah is a graceful accompaniment to one who is traveling. One who feels pain in his head should engage in Torah study. As it is stated, For they shall be a graceful wreath for your head. One who feels pain in his throat should engage in Torah study. As it is stated, 
and chains about your neck. One who feels pain in his intestines should engage in Torah study. As it is stated, it shall be health to your navel. Proverbs 3.8 One who feels pain in his bones should engage in Torah study. As it is stated, and marrow to your bones. Proverbs 3.8 One who feels pain in his entire body should engage in Torah study, as it is stated, and health to all their flesh. Proverbs 4.22 Rav Yehuda, son of Rabbi Haya, said, Come and see that the attributes of flesh and blood is unlike the attribute of the Holy One. Blessed be He. The attribute of flesh and blood is that when a person gives a drug to his fellow, it is good for this part of his body and it is harmful to that other part of his body. But the attribute of the Holy One, blessed be He, is not so. He gave the Torah to the Jewish people, and it is a drug of life for one's entire body, as it is stated, and health to all their flesh. The Gemara continues with praise for Torah study and knowledge. Rav Ami said, What is the meaning of that which is written? For it is a pleasant thing if you keep them within you. Let them be firmly attached together to your lips. Proverbs 22.18 When are words of Torah pleasant? When you keep them within you and know them. And when will you keep them within you? When they will be attached together to your lips, i.e. when you articulate them audibly and expound them. Rabbi Ziera said that this idea is derived from here. A man has joy in the answer of his mouth, and a word in due season. How good it is! Proverbs 15.23 When does a man have joy? When an answer related to Torah study is in his mouth. Another version. When does a man have joy in the answer of his mouth? when he experiences the fulfillment of a word in due season, how good it is, i.e. when he knows when and how to address each issue. Rabbi Yitzhak said that this idea is derived from here, but the matter is very near to you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. Deuteronomy 30, 14 When is it very near to you? When it is in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it, i.e. when you articulate your Torah study. Rava said that this idea is actually derived from here. You have given him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips, Selah. Psalms 21 Verse 3. When have you given him his heart's desire? When you have not withheld the request of his lips, Selah, i.e., when he converses in words of Torah. Rava raised an internal contradiction in that very verse. In the beginning of the verse, it is written, You have given him his heart's desire implying that it is enough for one to request in his heart. Whereas in the end of the verse, it is written, And you have not withheld the request of his lips, Selah, indicating that one must express his prayers verbally. Rava himself resolved the contradiction. If one is fortunate, you have given him his heart's desire even if he does not give verbal expression to his wants. But if he is not fortunate, at least you have not withheld the request of his lips. Selah. With regard to the end of this verse, a sage of the school of Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov taught the following Bereta. Wherever it states 
netza, sila, or va'ed, the matter will never cease. Netza, as it is written, for I will not contend forever, neither will I be eternally. La netza, angry, Isaiah fifty-seven sixteen, which demonstrates that netza bears a similar meaning to forever. Sila, as it is written, As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, may God establish it forever. Sila, Psalms 48, verse 9, which demonstrates that Sila means forever. Va'ed, as it is written, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. Va'ed, Exodus fifteen eighteen. In light of the previous discussion, the Gemara cites several expositions of verses proposed by Rabbi Eliezer, while first providing them with a mnemonic: chains, cheeks, tablets, engraved. Rabbi Eliezer said, "What is the meaning of that which is written, and chains about your neck?" Proverbs 1 9. If a person makes himself like a chain that hangs loosely on the neck, i.e., if a scholar is not pushy and disruptive to others, and he is also seen but not seen, i.e., just as a chain is covered by clothes and hair, so too the scholar does not let himself be seen. His Torah study will endure, but if not, If he acts in a rude and arrogant manner, his Torah study will not endure. And Rabbi Eliezer also said, What is the meaning of that which is written? His cheeks are like a bed of spices. Song of Songs, chapter 5, verse 13. If a person makes himself humble, like this garden bed, upon which everyone treads, and like this spice with which everyone perfumes himself, i.e. which benefits not only the one who wears it, his Torah study will endure. But if not, his Torah study will not endure. And Rabbi Eliezer further said, What is the meaning of that which is written? Tablets. Luhot of stone, Exodus thirty one eighteen. If a person makes his cheeks, Lahayav, like this stone that does not wear away, his Torah study will endure. But if not, i.e., if he is not diligent in his studies, his Torah study will not endure. And lastly, Rabbi Eliezer said, What is the meaning of that which is written? And the tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, engraved upon the tablets. Exodus 32, 16. This teaches that had the first tablets, the subject of this verse, not been broken, the Torah would never have been forgotten from the Jewish people as the Torah would have been engraved upon their hearts. Rava Bar Yaakov said, Had the tablets not been broken, no nation or tongue would ever have ruled over them, as it is stated, engraved. Do not read it engraved, harut, but rather freedom, herut. Similarly, Rav Matana said, What is the meaning of that which is written, The well that the princes dug out, that the nobles of the people delved, with the scepter, with their staves, and from the wilderness they went to Matana? Numbers 21.18 If a person makes himself humble, 
like this wilderness, which is open to all and upon which everyone treads, his Torah study will endure and be given to him as a gift, matana, and if not, his Torah study will not endure. The Gemara relates that Rav Yosef had a grievance against Rava, son of Rav Yosef Bar Hama, who is usually referred to in the Gemara simply as Rava. And as a result of the grievance, the two would never meet. When the eve of Yom Kippur arrived, Rava said, I will go and appease him. He went and found Rav Yosef's attendant mixing him a cup of wine. He said to the attendant, Give it to me, and I will mix it. He gave it to Rava, and Rava mixed it. Rav Yosef was blind and could not see his visitor. But when he tasted the wine, he said, This mixture is similar to the mixture of Rava, son of Rav Yosef Bar Hama, who would add extra water to the wine. Rava said to him, It is I. Rav Yosef said to him, Do not sit on your knees until you have explained these verses to me. What is the meaning of that which is written? And from the wilderness to Matana, and from Matana to Nahalil, and from Nahalil to Bamoth, and from Bamoth to the valley uh, in the field of Moab, to the top of Pisgah, which looks out toward the desert. Numbers 21, 19 and 20. Rava said to him, If a person makes himself humble like this wilderness, which is open to all and upon which everyone treads, the Torah will be given to him as a gift, matana. And once it is given to him as a gift, he inherits it, ne halo, and God, El, makes it his inheritance, as it is stated, and from Matana to Nahalil, and once God has made it his inheritance, he rises to greatness, as it is stated, and from Nahalil to Bamoth, which means heights. And if he becomes haughty, the Holy One, blessed be he, lowers him. As it is stated, and from Bamoth to the valley, and if he repents, the Holy One, blessed be he, raises him back up, as it is stated, every valley shall be exalted. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 4. Rav Huna said, What is the meaning of that which is written? Your flock found a dwelling in it. You, O God, prepare of your goodness for the poor. Psalm 68, 11. If a person makes himself like an animal that tramples its prey and eats it immediately without being particular about its food, i.e., if a scholar immediately reviews what he has heard from his teacher, and some say like an animal that soils and eats, i.e., if a scholar is not particular about maintaining his honor, During his Torah study, just as an animal is not particular about the quality of its food, his Torah study will endure, and if not, his Torah study will not endure, and if he does so, the Holy One, blessed be he, will himself prepare him a feast, as it is stated, You, O God, prepare of your goodness for the poor indicating that God, in his goodness, will himself prepare a feast for that pauper. Rabbi Haya bar Abba said that Rabbi Yohanan said, What is the meaning of that which is written? He who guards the fig tree shall eat its fruit. Proverbs twenty-seven eighteen. Why were matters of Torah compared to a fig tree, just as this fig tree, 